I applied to eight film schools in Europe, basically, and I went to talk to you about it. Hi everyone, and welcome to a video that I've been planning on doing for a while now, and I didn't know if I was going to end up doing it. I feel like I say that about all my videos, but I didn't know if I was going to end up doing it because um, I didn't really know if anybody cared, <laughs> to be honest. But I looked it up on YouTube and it seems to be something that is really helpful to a lot of people and was helpful to me in my process. So today I'm going to be talking about um, the process I went through um, while I applied or the process I went through. Anyway, in applying, that's not the right word. Uh... I applied to eight film schools in Europe, basically, and I'm going to talk to you about it because I think for any other um, aspiring filmmaker, it's really helpful to get kind of the inside scoop of what you have to do, what you have to look out for, what not to do, or things like that. Um, and yeah, yeah, so that, <laughs> I don't know why I overcomplicate things so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I hope you learned something from it, um, let me know if you guys have any questions about the things that I get into, and again, like, I'm not an expert or anything, this is not like facts, this is just my experience, so... Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, so what I was looking for. Um, for me, it was really important that I get a bachelor. I don't know if that's an ego thing. I don't know if that's just something that I thought is important because of how, you know, jobs are going to look at you and whatnot, because it's really different in the art world than it is in, I think, other industries. But I just wanted a bachelor, I wanted a proper like degree, sort to say, and um, that was a big criteria for me. And a lot of art schools um, have programs, like one-year programs, two-year programs, um, summer programs, and they all probably teach you the same content and are really great schools as well, but they just don't have the bachelor accreditation, Accredit yeah, you know what I mean? Um, and so those um, automatically went like out of my... Um, searching pool. Then I wanted three years because I find two is super hectic and stressed for something that requires so much time and thinking and ideas and collaboration and I also because I'm going to be abroad I want to have holidays to be able to visit my family and I don't want to then have like I don't know a week break and then right back to uni so that was something that was really important to me. Um, the third thing is I didn't want the school to be too small because I wanted to, you know, meet as many people as I could and I loved my workshop in Prague. It was so amazing, but we were only about, I think, 11 people and um, of course that's a different kind of program, but I just, I wanted it to be a little bigger. I wanted to have a bit more community and variety and yeah, that was just, I guess it's because I went to a small school, I kind of want to have a different experience. Um, and then fourth was a good student life. I wanted it to be somewhere where you can, you know, get to town easily, where you can uh, socialize with people, where you can do sports at the same time, have a little bit of balance and not just, you know, a huge campus in the middle of nowhere. And yeah, <laughs> so those were the kind of the things that I was looking for while looking for my universities. And I only looked in Europe and I only looked for English speaking courses. That's really important to me. I do speak other languages, but English is the one where I thrive the most, and especially with creativity, I want my thoughts to be really clear and vivid, so English was a key factor in uh, my decisions. Okay, um, so moving on to the second thing about where I applied and the requirements. So I have my laptop right next to me, that's why I'm going to be looking downwards. Um, let's start off with the UK because that was the biggest, um, that was the biggest like range of universities that I looked at. I applied to the University of Arts London, which was like my dream, is my dream, uh, I don't know, like the, the top choice just because it's quite a prestigious university and it's in London for God's sakes. Um, and I had just, you know, done quite a bit of research on the program and it really seemed like what I was looking for. Um, and the requirements for that was a portfolio and then, of course, all the UCAS requirements like personal statement and um, to the letter of recommendation and, and that stuff. The grades pretty much throughout all of my university um, of requirements, the grades requirements are not high. They were always usually like the passing of an IB diploma, which is what I did. The passing or at least like a 
28 30 range that was already good enough so that wasn't something that i had to focus on um it was mainly the portfolio and the personal statement that carried kind of the weight of the application then the second one is london film academy which um similar to ual had a um, portfolio but it was not as important like i think i don't know if i remember this correctly but i think you could send in a portfolio optionally like if you had one you were able to show your work if you had a film you could show it if you had photography you could show it but i don't think it was essential um and then again like obviously you had to pass your diploma and whatever uh, westminster university london same thing you needed a portfolio um, then met film school london uh, you had to have a minimum age that was a big thing in some schools you had to be at least for some schools you had to be 21 so i didn't even bother um, and then for some, you had to be 18, which I guess is normal. And again, this one had an optional, um, had an optional portfolio. So that's kind of where you see the difference in, um, how competitive a university is because a university that puts a lot of weight on the portfolio versus one that doesn't usually indicates that one is more inclusive than the other in, in terms of artistic cap like abilities and experience and stuff, not racially or whatever. And then the last one in the UK, this one's in Scotland, was Edinburgh University, and they had um, a higher actually score, like a grade. They required 34 IB points. I think that was the highest grade requirement. Um, and then a mini portfolio, which is a short film with a list of like questions, like a written um, kind of survey that you had to answer, uh, which they called the mini portfolio. So those were all the UK universities I applied to. Um, again, I didn't go into the requirements in depth. I'm just giving you a rough idea. There was definitely more detail, but um, for the most part, the portfolio for a film student is any film work, any photography work, any um, like scripts that you might have written or storyboards that you might have created, anything along those lines you can put in. It's not like a, a type of portfolio where they tell you exactly um, what you need, which I think makes it difficult because you have to kind of show your best side of yourself without really knowing like what they're going to look for, um, which why I think getting into art school is so competitive. So moving on to Germany, I applied to two universities in Germany, one being Film Universität Babelsberg Konrad Wolf, which is um, pretty well known in Germany. I don't think you guys know it, but it is um, in like an area near Berlin called Potsdam. And I apply there not only because it's way cheaper than the UK, but also because it's a really good university. But with that, because it's um, a public university, it has a lot more requirements and it is a lot, a lot more competitive. And especially for someone that doesn't live in Germany like me, getting into that school was really difficult. So um, the requirements for them was you had to have obviously like a motivation letter, kind of like a personal statement. You had to have a list of all your work experience. You had to have a CV um, in a specific structure. You had to have uh, your IB diploma or whatever school diploma. You had to have evidence of um, practical experiences. And then you had to have proof of all your work experience in the form of like a certification. Um, and then you had to write an expose um, and you had to have a photography series. So I actually had to do a photography project just for that application, um, which to be honest, in the moment, it really pissed me off. But in the end, I was able to use it for other applications as well. So it wasn't all that bad, but it was kind of a stress. <laughs> the second one in Germany that I applied to is called Hochschule Macromedia. Um, and they were super easy as well with the requirements. They just needed uh, a diploma and like a CV. But they needed me to do a German in, uh, language exam, which I didn't feel the need to do because it's just extra time and money for nothing. Um, and they were also really just like complicated with like the, they didn't understand the IB diploma. And then I didn't end up giving them my decision yet because I wasn't, I hadn't decided yet. And then they already said like, why did you decline? I don't know. It was a whole thing. So I wasn't really completely blown away by the school. The last place that I applied was in France and this is Eka. It's in like a suburb of Paris. Um, and their requirement was as well a letter of motivation, letter of recommendation, and then I think also a movie and any portfolio work. I don't remember if it was obligatory. I think you definitely had to hand in something, but I don't think they um, specified like that it had to be a specific thing. I think you had a bit of wiggle room on what part of your portfolio you applied. 
moving on to where I ended up getting accepted. Um, unfortunately, I got rejected from my first choice, which was the University of Arts London. But I'm not going to lie, like, you need to curate a portfolio over a really long period of time. And, like, the people that do that, they deserve the place at UAL. And my portfolio was limited, and I had only f focused on it in, like, my last year. And so, to be fair, I, I w it was such a long shot. I didn't actually think I was going to get in, but I thought I would try. Because when you apply with UCAS, you know, you are paying the same amount for five applications. So, I shot my shot. Didn't work out. It's okay. Um, but, yeah. Then London Film Academy, I got accepted. I had an interview. It went really well, and I got accepted. Then Westminster University, I didn't get accepted. Um, Met Film School, I did get accepted. I also had an interview, which went really well. Um, Edinburgh, I also got accepted. Um, then the German one, the Bob Spec, I did not get accepted. Again, that was a really rigorous one. And I, again, don't have that portfolio that people have curated over a long period of time. So that was a huge long shot. I was honestly... <laughs> It would have been a miracle if I got in. Um, and then the Macromedia School, I did get accepted to, but I was never really considering it. Cause... Um, and then ICAR, I also got accepted. So out of eight, I got accepted to five schools. Yeah. My criteria was the duration of the course, the fees, of course, um, the campus, whether I could study abroad, whether I could get work placements, what students had said on reviews, anything else that was relevant, and things that bothered me or things that made me doubt that school. Let's start with um, LFA. So the thing I was kind of on the fence about with LFA was the two year part, because I went to that one month workshop in Prague and it was, it was only one month and it was just so much work and such a little amount of time because they had condensed it and I felt like at LFA I felt like that two-year aspect was also going to be very condensed especially because most bachelors are three so I don't feel the need to rush it um, and the whole moving thing and settling in and then you're only there for two years it feels too little the campus it's small but it's very near the city so I really like that it was in a cool location but I Again, wasn't so sure about the size about it, of it. Um, I like that you could get work placements from it. There was no study abroad, though. I mean, if it's only two years, I had no study abroad. Um, but they did uh, work really well to get work placements. And it was actually something they told me in the interview that they were kind of known for. Then what students said about it. They said uh, there were small class sizes. It was very intensive but enjoyable. Everyone treated people like family. And they were built into a small community concept. There wasn't that many school events, but everyone was generally very happy with the course. It goes by very fast. Um, you do three films in two years, and there were guest lecturers very often, but they could have been a hit and miss. So this was really kind of broad thing. I also DM'd a lot of people on Instagram. I talked to a lot of people. So this is from online reviews and from real people that I talked to online. Then other things that kind of caught my attention is it's a female uh, founded and led organization, which is just so freaking awesome because like film is such a male driven industry. Uh, majority of the student reviews were also really positive and it offers a lot of visa support, which for someone that is trying to go into a country and needs to get a visa and stuff to have your school back you up is really helpful. Um, and then the things that bother me, I said that the syllabus was so compressed. Um, and you cover so many key concepts in one year. And some of the statistics of the school, like success rates, weren't the best. So that was kind of my analysis of LFA. Then for Met Film School, I could choose between a two or a three year program. So I really liked that I had the ability to do the three year option if I wanted it. Um, for the campus, it's kind of spacious, but it just seemed like the spaces are a bit like bland, like not necessarily super modern fun and fresh and which maybe is a lot to ask i don't know um but it is located to yelling studios so you get to see ongoing live film productions which i thought was pretty cool uh no study abroad but did have um some kind of work opportunities then what student says is that there's a lot of work opportunities with the met film futures campaign thing that they have um it's very interactive uh you get to learn a lot with industry tutors and guest speakers so people that really know their stuff um, the school organizes like mixers and stuff, but there's not really a freshers thing, which I mean, I don't know that much about freshers, but like, I think it'd be cool if my school had freshers, but I think that might be an art thing. I don't know. 
um, societies and sport teams, they're provided by the University of West London, which accredits Met Film School, which means that although my school wouldn't have it if I went to Met, I could go to the like sister university um, and still have all that stuff. Um, there's movie nights, very hands-on learning. The classes are small, but they get mixed a lot. Uh, a lot of fun and working with industry professionals. So the feedback from students was generally really positive. Then uh, things that uh, I noticed other than that was that there was a lot of good communication with the admissions and just the people in general um, from like the staff that I had to email with. I get to own the rights to my film, which I'm gonna get to later why that's such an important point for me. Um, and then some things that bother me was that they don't really work with Ealing Studios that much, but they advertise it a lot. Um, and accommodation is not from the school themselves and it can get extremely, extremely expensive. And that's what also students have told me. So Edinburgh, Edinburgh is like my, I don't know what's the word, lost soldier or my, my bubble that got burst, burst, my, the parade that got rained on because it would have been, I would have loved to go to Edinburgh. I think it's a beautiful city. I think I would have really enjoyed the student life. I think it would have been so much fun, but I just couldn't find any information. There was such a lack of representation of not only the film course, but a lot of the art, like film, TV, like the whole like interactive media, like not just painting and sculpturing. Um, there was just no information. I couldn't find couldn't find like any posts about it on their social media. I couldn't find short films from University of Edinburgh on Vimeo or YouTube. Uh, I couldn't like find any alumni to talk to. And it was also a review that read that there was a lot of money put into the program like by students, like they pay a lot for the tuition, but then the program was super limited and they didn't really have that many uh, facilities and resources. So the fact that there's barely any activity about like the film program on just the College of Art, not even University of Edinburgh Instagram, like the Edinburgh College of Art platforms and social media and handles and everything. Um, it just indicated that it's not represented enough, it's not funded enough, there's not enough um, attention given to the program. So although the university as a whole is amazing, it's not an art school and that is not the best film program I can get. So ACAV is three years as well. It's an international program, which is cool because everyone is kind of from everywhere. And I think that's really awesome. Um, the campus is amazing. Like, oh, that video that I saw, it's insane. It's really spacious, has super advanced facilities. It's in the outskirts of Paris. So, I mean, obviously you can get to Paris somewhat quickly. Um, uh, and there's accommodation right by the school, like in the next building. So it looked really, really awesome. Um, then what students says that it's not really advanced for like not for advanced filmmakers, which was kind of a good thing for me because I'm an amateur. Um, there was some complaints about favoritism, which was a bit like me. Eh. Um, and there wasn't a lot of community like school events or um, organized like I don't know if it's parties or gatherings or um, social things just to you know th like allow the integration of the students. It didn't seem like that was a big priority based on what the students said. So there's a French system and a lot of people said it was really poorly organized, really hectic and class changes and schedule changes and just messy. Um, and if you don't get the housing at the school, you're going to struggle a lot um, because it's apparently impossible to find a place. Then the things that bother me about Ecar was it's not the English film market. Like the English film market is significantly bigger than the French one, at least for someone that's better at English than French. Um, and I didn't want to struggle to find a job after. And I didn't want to struggle to integrate myself into the industry. And then if I did integrate myself, then not really be able to rise. Big one is they don't let you have the rights to your films, which I think is a huge like thing because you don't know what you want to do with those after and if a school that maybe you didn't even end up liking ends up having the rights to your films just because they provided the facilities that really rubs me the wrong way i literally just got goosebumps actually <laughs> um and there was also some drama because the director was in a sexual assault trial with a student which is kind of messed up um and yeah so that is the rundown of the selection and like the criteria that I use to um, judge uh, the different schools. Of course, I looked at the fees as well, but again, the fees are really similar. So it wasn't a huge um, like difference. It wasn't a huge game changer, except that University of Edinburgh was significantly more. But again, 
program was super underfunded. So yeah. And now last but not least, um, my final kind of breakdown. So I can tell you guys the order of like the process of, uh, process of elimination that I did. So first, the first one that I eliminated was Edinburgh for obvious reasons, just because I had no confidence that the program was going to be um, like the supported enough, like the film department had enough, I don't know, attention, growth, whatever. Um, so that one I scratched off right away, which was really sad because I would have loved to go to Embra and I thought it was a really big deal that I got in and now I feel like it was probably not. But anyway, <laughs> then it was down to LFA, ICAV and MFL. I did, I took off ICAV after, like next, it was kind of like between, because LFA and MFL are very similar in most of the aspects, so it was kind of like UK or Paris. And at one point I was like, I'm not going to the UK, like I'm definitely going to ACA, like 100%, this is what I want. But then I was thinking, and a lot of, I, I felt like my judgment was being really, really clouded because of the amazing campus video. And I was just thinking about the campus and how cool it is and blah, blah, blah. And I was thinking, what use is this amazing campus if I end up not liking like the course or the people? or not end up learning it. Like I'll have a huge green screen studio and all these cameras and I don't know what to do. So, you know, maybe it's not like, it's super cool and looks super awesome. And I wish I could like have a campus like that, but I feel like it shouldn't overrule um, everything. And I was kind of getting clouded by it. So I ended up choosing like to take it out as well. Um, especially just because I mean, so many bad reviews. Like I've never seen so many bad reviews about a school. I mean, how could it be so bad? I don't know, it's scary. Um, and then it was down to LFA and MFL. And ultimately the game changer was the two years versus the three year programs. I really didn't want to rush it. I wanted to have a fun time, intense, but also with good breaks and some kind of relaxed balance in between. So that was really important to me. Um, Met is also a little bit bigger, which I liked. Um, and yeah, having that person to help me out, having that like friend to kind of support me and know that I had a safety net was really, really motivating in choosing Met. And she spoke so highly of it as well and is doing the exact same program. So yeah, that's my final decision. I'm going to Met Film School as of September 19th. I'm going to be moving in in a few weeks. And yeah, I'm going to live in London, which is kind of crazy and kind of terrifying as well. But I'm super excited. I've lived in the same place my whole life. So this is a really cool fresh start for me and I think I really need it as well um but yeah that's it that was my video on applying to eight different film schools I hope it was helpful interesting or whatever and kind of helps anyone that is in the same boat I'll link the spreadsheets that I made down below to help me visualize everything if you guys want to have a look at them if you need to review any of the stuff I said I'm sorry I talk really fast I don't know what my problem is but yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you have a fabulous rest of the day and I will see you very soon. Bye. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world.